Steve, how would you describe the confidence you have in Jordan Poole as a shooter? Uh, really high. Um, you know, he's uh, he's worked so hard on it. I, I think the uh, uh, the challenge this year is, you know, being aggressive but without uh, forcing. And uh, I think the last few games he's he's gotten much better in terms of his shot selection. You know, just taking the taking the ones that are there, and not uh, you know, not launching um, tough ones. And uh, you know, tonight I don't remember. Guys, in a good position. Yeah, you know, every team's game plan is to uh, try to slow Steph down, and he draws so much attention. So anytime you know we can get a couple of guys, Wiggs and Jordan, especially in the starting lineup. Um, we can get those guys going early. They're going to have some openings, and I thought both both Andrew and Jordan took advantage of those openings early. And um, Wiggs, same as Jordan, you know, figuring out um, you know his his openings, um, being aggressive, but being just part of the offense. I think it's he's really starting to to get in the groove. Steve, this is the second night in a row. You know, we've seen Jordan picking his places, Andrew being aggressive. What does that change for you as a team going forward if you're getting that on a nightly basis from these two guys? Well, the biggest thing is just the, the balance. This, the scoring balance means that teams can't uh, throw everything at Steph. You know, that's what was happening last year. We saw that where, you know, teams were throwing every everything they had at Steph. And, um it's it's continued this year, but we we have um, you know more overall shooting this year. And uh, you know Otto, I haven't mentioned. I thought he was fantastic tonight. Uh, made some big threes for us. But just the overall spacing means that if teams are gonna you know throw the kitchen sink at at Steph, then they're gonna they're gonna pay. Steve, at the the clip that you're winning and with the cushions you're building on the scoreboard, you get to try a lot of different player combinations. What are you still looking for at this point in the season? Well, first of all, everybody on our roster is capable of helping us win a game. Um, it's a very deep team. Tonight was uh, Cheese's uh, moment. You know, it's his birthday today, um, which uh, was coincidental to him playing. I mean, it was just a good matchup for him. You know, Toronto is a fast, strong, athletic team, and that's Jesus' kind of game. So, um, perfect example um, of, of a guy who stays ready and, you know, waits waits for his turn and a great teammate. The guys gave him an ovation in the locker room after the game. They respect him so much for how hard he works and just his approach every day. So, it's, uh, you know, and then you, you look at Juan after being out of the rotation for whatever it was, four or five games, you know, now the last few games, he's found his way back in there and he's helping us win. So it's great to have everybody, everybody on the roster contributing and understanding that every night's going to be a little different and they all just have to stay ready. Does this sort of situation where everybody stays ready, does that bode well for bringing Clay back and bringing Wiseman back? Um, Folding guys into the offense. Again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, those when those guys are back, it's um, what it means is there's fewer minutes, you know, to go around. Um, but um, I think, you know, what's being established is the uh, the approach of this team and uh, each individual player. It doesn't mean everyone's always going to be happy. Um, you know, if they wouldn't be human if they weren't disappointed when they didn't play. Um, but the awareness, the understanding that it's about the team and it's about the big picture and that everyone's time will come, I think that is being established. That's important for our team. Steve, what would you attribute uh, Wiggins' ability to stay uh, consistently aggressive? Is it something that's switched in his head? Is it uh, more comfort in the offense? Or what, what would you I think more comfort. I think the... Um, you know, early part of the season, he wasn't in, in, in good enough shape yet with the knee. Um, the knee issue held him back in camp, so he hadn't gotten over the hump conditioning-wise. And then I think it took me uh, some time to really figure out, um, the, you know, how to use him and the messaging. And, you know, we were so focused on him defensively early in the season, and I don't think I did a good job of really uh, – reminding him uh, to be aggressive and uh, kind of took him for granted there for a couple of weeks and 
And then I, so I think our staff has just done a better job of, you know, putting him in positions to attack and score, and but also to give him that mentality that, hey, we need this every single night. Um, beyond that, it's, I mean, he, he's the one who's doing it, obviously. So I think, uh, I think something triggered, you know, that at the, after that Minnesota game, and he's held himself accountable night in and night out. To it's in Motown, and last Friday was the anniversary of the Malice in the Palace. That happened about 17 years ago, and LeBron James gets into it here. This is what I don't understand this, right? If you are going to get into something, he had a chance when the whole thing started, right? He yes, came he up did. on him, it was like, all right. Right. But then when people grabbed him, now it's like, now it's time to start showing up. I never understood this, but I do understand his frustration. This was a dirty This is a free throw. This That's is what happened play. here. When look LeBron hits Isaiah Stewart in the face. In the original scrum. And look, everybody's trying to get him. Kane Cunningham trying to calm him down. And Stewart's bloody, man. He was in a fight. Oh! Oh! That's the replay of it. LeBron James started it. Looks like LeBron, uh... He had bad intentions there. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, then that that replay right there didn't look too good. I've never seen this. I've never seen this right here. Ooh, what is happening? Man, look at that, DJ. Oh, yeah, DJ. Who is that? Protect your protect, protect your king. <laughs> Man, Russell Westbrook was getting to the stance here. Look, that was the high angle video of him charging LeBron and knocking personnel down. And wow. Look at he's him still going? Oh he's trying to go God. around the arena. <laughs> oh, he's trying to go around the arena. Oh, man. Dude, that, che that check is going up more and more. That fine is going to be crazy. They don't Can't know the king role with security. He ain't going to touch LeBron. No, he nobody's had an opportunity. Touching, nobody's touching LeBron. I mean, Isaiah Stewart, I don't know how much he makes, but that fine. Oh, yeah, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty? Yes. How many games do you think he'll be suspended? Two, three? Yeah, just that That don't look good. You know, you refusing to get, leave the court. That's going to be the biggest problem. Like, okay, we know you're upset. That was a dirty play. You got to go off the court, though. What about LeBron James? He got ejected for the second time in his career. So did anything happen to him? Wow. That was uh, flagrant two, they called it? Yeah. Pop one game. Are we going to pop the key for one game? I don't know. Is he going to lose somebody? That's definitely not happening. I mean, I'm not got nothing to say about that. Well, if he does get fined, we know LeBron can afford it. He's he's doing pretty well in that department. Let's look at Steph Curry here, who struggled tonight. Two for ten, only hit one three. So now he's 56 behind, or he needs 56 threes to surpass Ray Allen for the all-time three-point list. But look, Toronto played defense. They were locked in on him, and they forced other guys to beat. Uh, them tonight, but Steph Curry, look, even though he only scored 12, D right, eight assists. Eight assists, you know, impact the game any type of way. I thought, like we talked about in the pregame, uh, Fred, he plays some great defense on Steph Curry. Uh, you know, he's a smaller guy, he's strong, he gets up under you, he's kind of annoying, and it shows on his side of the ball as well, on the offensive side, because Fred didn't have a good game as well. So it takes a lot of discipline. It takes you to be locked in to guard a guy like Steph Curry. Yeah, absolutely. And one of my favorite plays of the whole game was Steph has what? He has six points for, for most of the first half. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into the second quarter. Now it's like, okay, third quarter, Steph still has six points. So what's going to happen, right? He has to get, his, get to his average. So he has nine points or seven points or something. And he comes in and he has the ball. He has the layup. But he still dishes off to his teammate yep. mm -hmm. for a layup. That's, this, is, this is the culture I'm talking about. This is what you're talking about when you talk about the energy, moving the ball. Yo, the, his time is going to come back around. This, there's, no, there's no rush for Steph. I got to make sure my teammates are good. And so this is why you have an amazing leader in Steph. That's why the Warriors are so good. And one of the guys who picked up Steph Curry was his back was a backup point guard. Cheese, the birthday <laughs> boy. Chris Chiosa came off the bench Happy and lit this crowd on fire. To to you. Happy birthday, birthday to points. you. Happy birthday, dear Cheese. Look at Cheese here getting in on the action. Right? Hey, he's a, he's a smart, high IQ basketball player. He plays at the right pace. Uh, he doesn't let anybody speed him up. He's tough. And you can never tell him and Steph Curry went on the court together. Yeah, I know. So, they kind of look alike. Yeah, they kind of look alike. How like, many times like, did I make that mistake earlier? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, Steph, oh, wait, no. Steph got tatted. tatted. Yeah. yeah. One has <laughs> tattoos, the other doesn't. And look, filling in for Gary Payton, the second yes. who didn't play tonight, who has some right soreness, uh, right side soreness tonight. So Chielsa steps up. Yep. It's been the case all season long. And Godala does a play, Otto Porter Jr. steps up. This team, as you keep saying, Festus, strength in numbers 2.0, and we're seeing it happen in real time. This is why you have an amazing coach. This is you have a leader that people respect. 
Because at the end of the day, that's what you need, right? You need somebody who's a great manager of people. Everybody can play in the NBA. Yeah. That's not the, the, the job is not to teach people how to play basketball. It's to get them to get ready, to be prepared for when their opportunity comes. And also to manage expectations, too, as the season goes along. Because everybody doesn't get to shine at the same time. Mm-hmm. But be prepared for when your time comes. Because then... And you get your role and you can win and we this is how you win. This is where you 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 build that foundation that you need for the playoffs. You guys have any monster games on your birthday? No. No? I hardly played on my birthday. Yeah, that's right. It was I had your birthday. December second. Yeah, Soon. That's right. Soon. You know I'm off. To, we off here too. We're off here, all oh, man. But <laughs> October twenty first is preseason, so yeah, that's okay. my birthday. But I got to come back. My second year in the NBA, I was out for a year. And so I came back on my birthday. My birthday present that year was Steve Kerr in our film session that day saying, Festus, for your birthday today, we're going to let you play. We are clear to play basketball. That was my best (laughs) birthday present. You know what I mean? That's a dope present. That's a dope present. With Chris Fields, a cheese, as they call him, scores 11 on his B-Day. And we talk about guys stepping up, Otto Porter Jr. Look, he's been in the funk. He sat out a couple games. He scores 15 a night, and he had a three-ball roll, and he's just been a solid contributor for this roster all season long. Hey, this is a former uh, number three pick. We know this guy can play. He's just all about him getting in shape and getting comfortable with the, with the system. This is going to be big time for him as well once Clay Thompson is back. He's going to be seeing a lot of open shots, and one of those guys who specialize those 